Hi friends! Are you a medical student or a junior doctor struggling to get points for applications? Do you want to get involved in research but don't know how to get started? Don't worry, that's what the Academic Doc is here for. We provide a simplified step-by-step -step guide on how you can get started with research. If you're new here, my name is Leher and I'm an Academic Junior Doctor working in Nottingham. Today, I will be sharing my top 10 tips and tricks for getting started with research. But before we do that, I'd like you to take some time to think about the following questions. What are you interested in? It may be that you already have a specialty or subject in mind that you are interested in, so it's worthwhile doing something related to it. Also, you won't enjoy a project if it's not something you're genuinely interested in. But don't get too bogged down by trying to find the perfect project. Research is research and it's the skills that you develop and the outcome that really matters at the initial stages. How much time do you have? Is it something you're planning to do alongside your job or studies, or can you dedicate specific time or your summer holidays to it? And what are you hoping to get out of it? Maybe it's your first experience and you just want to get a flavour of what research is, or are you looking for a publication or conference presentation? It's important to understand that not all research will get published, but there are always other ways of showcasing your work, such as conferences or departmental meetings. So here are my top 10 tips for getting started with research. Tip number one, research societies. Research societies are a great way to meet like-minded people. Most universities and medical schools have a research society, so it's worthwhile finding if your university or medical school has one. But don't worry if they don't. There are a variety of national research societies that you may be able to get involved in. For example, Inspire or Star Surge if you're surgically minded. I've posted links to some of these in the comments section below. Tip number two, SSC. So SSC is student selected component or elective modules and most medical schools have these built into their curriculum. These are a great way to get involved in research or to get involved in an ongoing study project. Tip number three is intercalated degrees. Now this is a whole topic in itself. Intercalation is a great way to get involved in research. In most cases, you'll be doing a project that you're interested in for a prolonged period of time. It's also a great way to show commitment to a particular specialty. But I understand that intercalation isn't for everyone and don't worry, intercalation isn't the be all or the end all of research. Tip number four is university schemes. Most universities and medical schools have schemes available for students to get involved in research during the summer holidays. This gives you a prolonged experience to research, particularly if you don't have time to get involved in research during your term time. They also give you a bursary, so it's a great way to get involved in research, particularly if you're just starting out. Tip number five is seniors or peers. It's always a good idea, particularly when you're starting out, to speak to senior colleagues or your peers who have had experience of doing research. It may be that they can point you in the right direction of appropriate staff members, or they might be able to get you involved in a project that they're already doing. Tip number six, supervisors. At the beginning of your clinical attachments, it's always a good idea to make your clinical or your educational supervisor aware of your research interests. It may be that they can get you involved in a project that they're already involved in, or they can point you in the right direction of someone who can help. Tip number seven is websites. You can always go on the university or hospital website and find staff who have similar research interests to you. It's a good idea to send them a friendly email just explaining your project or asking them if they have any spare data lying around that you can analyse. Just remember to attach a copy of your CV just to make that first impression right. Tip number eight, audits. Although clinical audits are not a conventional form of research, they share some common principles and skills that you can always use to get involved in original research at a later date. Plus, it's a great way to show your enthusiasm and maybe you might also get a conference presentation out of it, which looks great on applications. Audits can easily be done whilst on clinical placements, so it's worthwhile making your clinical supervisor aware of your interests. 
I'll be doing a video later in this series on how you can get involved in a clinical audit. Tip number nine, case reports. For many medical students and doctors, writing a case report is often the first and the simplest way to get articles published in a medical journal. Case reports use an individual case as a way to summarise a rare or unusual clinical condition, unique use of diagnostic interventions or response to treatment. It usually falls on medical students and junior doctors to write up the case, so it's a fairly straightforward way to get involved in research. If you're struggling to find interesting cases, speak to your supervisor or a consultant in a specialty you're interested in, and they usually have a bank of cases ready so you can ask them for suggestions. I'll be doing a video later in the series on how you can write a case report. And tip number 10, be organized and know your limitations. Getting involved in research is great, but do not take on more work than you can manage. Remember, studying medicine or being a junior doctor is a full-time commitment. So any research you do is an extracurricular activity and has to be done in your own time. That said, it's easily feasible to do a small project alongside your work or your clinical studies if you're organized with your time. So that was a quick overview of my top 10 tips for getting involved in research. Thank you very much for watching and I do hope you enjoy the content of the video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and comment to stay up to date with the latest content of the channel. In the next video in the series, I'll be providing a step-by-step -step guide on how you can do a clinical audit. See you on the next video. Bye for now.